Boom. And we're live. Hello, everybody. It's been a while. Long time no see. Still can't see you, but you can see us. That's right. I am sharing this. So what are we going to talk about tonight? First of all, hi. It's been a while. We, yes. Uh, you... I, I put the thumbnail back on the road. We might change this because depending on what we it's still appropriate talk um, about tonight. Um, so if you're new here, welcome to Music and Mascara. My name is Leslie. And my name is Dylan. And we are obviously in an RV. Um, so back on the road. Yeah. We typically do these lives on the fourth Sunday. We missed it this month. Um because the fourth Sunday kind of slipped up on us and we had a last Sunday, so it felt redeemable. Um, <laughs> it seems to work perfect. Yeah, so... Dennis, hello. Anyway, we want to just touch base with everybody. Um, if you're curious what our plan is, we covered that in previous videos, so we're not going to talk about that again. But on the road again, um, we've been kind of sitting still and stagnant for couple of months and had a break in some plans and decided okay let's go do something um so we're out for a shorter run right yep. um and this is the second stay on this run we are in the low country of south carolina and it is low and it is wet it's and it is raining low and wet and muddy and terrible. Jason, how are you? Thanks for joining us this evening. I don't know if terrible is the right word because it's really pretty here. It is pretty. It's just it will not stop raining. And every little bit of rain turns into a lot just of mud. a lot of mud. I mean, it's just when they say the low country of South Carolina, it is literally low. I mean, mm -hmm. what's the... Uh, here, hang on. I don't know what the elevation is. It is... Higher than we were, I bet. It says 283 feet, but I find that very hard to believe. I wonder what mine says. What do you use to do yours? Just Apple Watch something or other. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's My low, man. My phone says it's 32 feet. 32 feet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this must be some sort of... I don't know. I'll look into it. 32 feet makes way more sense. 32 feet is... Yeah, because it's, it's low um it's fun though it's a neat place we've been doing a bunch of exploring uh if you've been following us on our instagrams uh you will see on music and mascara instagram yeah we should talk about that so music and mascara instagram and we also post a lot on our personal instagram so if you check out like the tagged photos when you're on music and mascara you'll get links back to other accounts if you really love photography because that is yeah. Where we both share a lot of stuff also. I've actually finally figured out a program for sharing drone photography and drone video. I, I, it's been like this thing, like I have all this drone video and I love shooting it, but I didn't really know what to do with it. So uh, you can see that on um, Music and Mascara Instagram. Yep. Um, and part of that too, so my project has been, I really like water and the sound of water. And what was I doing with all this footage? That was really for me personally, yep. but wanted to be able to share it. So selfishly, it's like on a highlight on my Instagram, mainly so I can refer to it at any time. But now you can see where we've been and where we were. I, I dated them and put the place on there just again for my own recollection it's funny like you think you won't forget something but even as i'm scrolling back i'm i think i'm back to may of 2020 i'm going backwards but i've had to literally look at the calendar where were we look at the map i forgot the name like mm -hmm. so it does happen so i was like no i definitely need to capture this better and save it so that we don't forget those things phil hello i did not miss you there and dennis wants to know right away uh what do we have in our glasses this evening. You go first because you actually have something more exciting than me. I don't what, know if it's exciting. What's in there? It's in a music and mascara cup. You can get one of these if you want. Um, 
So we actually went, this will, this comes with a little story. We did some day drinking, exploring yesterday. <laughs> um, we, because we've just kind of, well, one, where we stayed right before this stay, we're still kind of far from things, but the stay before this was more rural than this. And we just kind of have been running out of things. And, you know, then it just compounds and you just keep running out of things. So grocery um, trip. I wanted to go pick up a couple things and that turned into well let's try a new distillery and we were out of gin of and vodka at the same time and tequila but that it's not relevant to Te this story tequila hasn't happened yet um anyway so we went and we did and we have very different taste if you follow us at all we have very different taste in alcohol so we each got to get our own flight to try um i loved mine they're, they must do clear liquor way more than they do dark liquor is kind of the conclusion mm -hmm. we came to. Um, but I liked their vodka. I liked their gin. Um, so this is just a gin and tonic. Cool. And I am drinking uh, a Henry McKenna that I picked up. It's like a $12 bottle of bourbon that I picked up in Kentucky when we were at Land Between the Lakes earlier in the summer. Mm -hmm. I actually bought this as a gift for somebody, but I have not seen him because of COVID, so he's just gonna have to deal with it because I'm drinking it. Um, it is... Uh, I don't know if it's as, as exclusive as we thought, because I've seen it in many liquor stores since we've gotten But it is getting more expensive. Is it? Yes. I hadn't it is already. She told me that it won some bunch of contests, and so all of a sudden it's getting mm -hmm. more expensive. And it has been 25 to $30 a bottle. I paid uh, 14 I thought or it was 12 like 15 or something. At our normal one. where we Oh, were. really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it might be where it's available. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe they just haven't placed a new order, so it's still the older batch leslie does amazing pictures i really enjoy them is that dennis nope that is oh. jason and then dennis said he really enjoys both of your instagram accounts stellar pics there yeah i knew dennis had commented on um a couple of things so that's what made me you know i am um, i'm more of a photographer than i am a guitar player i hate to say that but it is really true i love video and photos it's, man i love it i love it i love it i love it um so you did have some sort of subject that we were going to talk about tonight. Yeah. Because so we... Just to be super vulnerable, so we're... Next time we meet with you, it will probably be like a one-year anniversary of living in this motorhome. Um, so... Yeah, it's crazy. We, we are coming up with that year comes a lapse in some memberships that we had. Um, so selfishly... I kind of want to have the conversation like let's talk through what we had this year what worked what didn't work and then looking forward and I would even like to get some feedback from people who have experience with this like what works for you what doesn't work for you etc so that's kind of where mm -hmm. I want to go with this conversation so what she's talking about is in RV life <clears throat> there is tons of memberships for various stuff that you can buy um and it's all some of it's very expensive like thousands of dollars some of it's 59 dollars for the year mm -hmm. some of it's you know uh 29 for the year so mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of all over the place but they add various levels of service and and or functionality to your rving specific life aka discounts discounts and uh, yeah, so let's talk about, I guess, some of the smaller ones, maybe some of the ones, that even if you're not an RVer, you know about um, Good Sam. You've probably heard mm -hmm. of Good Sam before. That's uh, basically a Camping World gander deal. Um, Which is great, even if you're not an RVer, because yes. you, if you ever shop at like a Camping World or Gander Outdoors, um, you get a discount there. If you buy your gas at Pilot or Flying J, you get a discount there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And if you have a gander outdoors where you live, I mean, that's even like hunting clothes and gun stuff and all kind of, you know, everything else, not having anything to do, anything camping or anything outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only place in Augusta where you can actually buy ammo right now. Like, Do they have it though? 
I mean, they did last time I was there. Oh. I didn't need any, but I, I did go look for that. I was like, because people keep everybody's saying that out, everybody's yeah. out, you know. Um, just for even going to the range or whatever, you know, just a regular nine mil or whatever, just to go to the range with, um, which is what I was looking for. And yeah, they had it. So, um, so anyway, it's, it's like 29 bucks a year. Um, we, we saved, so we've obviously used a lot of fuel. Um, we've saved almost a hundred bucks maybe in the year. In fuel? Yeah. Just it was with around, fuel, yeah, mm -hmm. right around a hundred bucks. Yep. Somewhere right around a hundred bucks, we saved in fuel. So paid for itself, well. Yep. Well, then, um, yeah. And then of course you get discounts at the store, and we had to make some pretty major purchases. You know, um, the Wi-Fi booster was five hundred bucks, so having ten percent off of that was obviously helpful. Yeah. We um, buy our toilet paper there. We buy all of our, our tank treatment. Yeah. So all the consumables. Yeah. Uh, they that definitely um, helps for all that stuff. So some of the things about um, Camping World and Good Sam, I know a lot of people give them a bad rap for service and stuff, but I feel like at least for, which I don't have a whole lot of familiarity with <laughs> because I do all my own repairs, um, most of them, you know, so I don't really care about that so much because we have an older coach, but um, for like I said, for the consumable stuff, yeah. it's worth it. And then in addition, so... We are RVing. Um, they also have a network of campgrounds. And if you're a member, you get 10% off. So that has come in handy at at some places where we stayed like a week. Um, yeah, because they would do like six nights, get one free, mm -hmm. stuff like so that. So that was helpful mm -hmm. also. So and when we you're, have more than got our money was worth. Yeah, because when you're dealing with up already for the 30 to year. $40 a night for an RV yes. park in some of those parks, and then you're, you know, it's saving you a whole, a night's, mm -hmm. it's worth it. Um, what else is there? We got, um. So we had Good Sam this year that mm -hmm. we purchased. So we, I want to. We'll talk we're about free talk stuff about in that. a minute. So we're, we did purchase it the first year. We've renewed it for the second year. So no question there. We feel like we had good value in that. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely something we will continue to take advantage of. Um, so something else that we are currently a member of. Um, is KOA, which is Campgrounds of America. That mm -hmm. was um, from the dealership. So we didn't purchase this membership, but we used it a lot. When we bought our RV, they gave us a free year. Yeah. And we will buy it. Yeah. Yeah, we will buy it again. Because it, uh, you get a, we use it a lot. I mean, we're about to stay in one for a week. A week. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, definitely it's worth it. It's definitely worth it for us. Um, if you do not use it regularly, it might not be worth it for you. Um, however, if you are just a experimental RVer, even if you you know only go out a few times a year, um, KOAs are very easy and very nice places to stay. And they are... For a full timer, they're a little expensive because you you know you would stay a whole month at forty dollars a night is kind of expensive. But if you're going out for long weekends or whatever, there are many times where we have actually paid for a KOA on purpose because we wanted the conveniences of it. We wanted the Wi-Fi. We wanted yeah. the not muddy site. We wanted like we just wanted it to be easy for yeah. a minute and not so it's have really yeah and it's really good dependent on how you travel are you turning that on and no, off no no i accidentally um depending on how you travel so last year you know we started traveling one way and then we kind of migrated into a different level of travel meaning we're going slower we've talked about that mm -hmm. but if you have a destination in mind and you just are kind of trying to hop to get to a destination like he's saying, KOAs are really easy. Most of them are pull through. They are usually long enough. You don't have to unhook. They have full hookups. So um, it was really great because there was times we stayed over the year and we didn't have full hookups and we just knew we could pull into a KOA. We could wash all the clothes and be back to good before mm -hmm. we hit the road again. Yeah. Um, so it is very convenient. I've ne we've never had a problem with like stuff being level, nothing like that. And it's not expensive. Uh, we did one time. Mount Shasta was terrible. I did not like that KOA. We went with a bad attitude to that one, though. Yeah, in, that was in a, all fairness. That was a stressful. That was a bad day. That was a, that was a bad day. 
Um, yeah, let's just say HOA led to a KOA, and it was not a good day. Ooh, Ooh so many rounds. Yeah, I should be a rapper. All right. It's not a haiku, though. Next. <laughs> um, so we will buy KOA again, in short. It's only $33 a year. I don't think we said oh, that. Oh, jeez, yeah. So it's not expensive at all. Um, and so then the next thing that we purchased ourselves, Harvest Host. Mm-hmm. We purchased... It's $79 for the Harvest Host part of it. And I think it's like an extra 29 to add on all these golf, golf courses. courses. Um, so how much is that? 79 plus 29. Mm -hmm. We haven't used it. Haven't used it one time. So the intention of Harvest Host is very cool. It The intention is very, very cool. Basically what it is, is there's no hookups or anything. So you have to have a self-contained unit. But basically it's a business somewhere. Could be a distillery, could be a golf course, could be a vineyard, could be a farm, whatever. There's a whole map you can, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and their online, their system is fantastic. Yeah. Like as far as route planning, I will say. Yeah. So basically, let's say we're going to stay, uh, let's say we're going to stay in an RV park and we're going to leave on Saturday morning and uh, we're going to drive, you know, 600 miles or 500 miles and you're going to split it up into a couple of days and you're going to end up at your next destination uh you know sunday night so along the way you got to find a place to stay saturday night so you pay this 89 dollars a year and you can stay at this place for free and what they expect you to do is just patronize the business so if it's so it does cost you something yeah if so if it's a distillery a or a whatever mm -hmm. you know go in there and you know, a lot of them have little hobbies, you know, little, little shops, like, you know, go in there and buy, you know, lo some local honey or whatever, whatever it is to, to help support that business. It helps support the local business. You get to stay there for free and then you get to move on. Mm -hmm. um, what we found is we know we very rarely travel that way anymore because we slowed down a lot. Mm -hmm. We were staying, we were traveling two days a week. A week we were traveling saturday and sunday and we were going four to six hundred miles at a time um every weekend and later in the year as we continued to do this more we realized that we're not doing that as much we're going i mean i think like our next trip is going to be the longest day we've had in a quite a while and it's going to be 300 miles so we don't go that far and we'll do it in one shot it'll take six hours mm -hmm. probably and we'll be there and so we won't need that extra night over in the middle i think that's kind of what harvest host is made for is like a yeah. free stopover that doesn't cost you that much that you can stop over to your next destination which is really cool and the idea is very cool i just feel like we personally don't yeah, use it it's not good for us uh -uh. i do like the concept i still love the idea um because you discover things you wouldn't have found otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of off the beaten path, you know, because they're not like touristy attractions right. necessarily. Some of them are. There are some museums and things on the list too. Um, so hey, the, Doc. The idea is fantastic, but we never found one. We did try. There was never one like super convenient for us. And then we were also traveling. I mean, we're still in it. We were traveling during covid you don't necessarily want to patronize these businesses. They had limited staffing and hours, um, and it just did not work well. But since we've slowed down travel, I don't know that it would be beneficial for us. Yeah, we were not going to buy that again. one again. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to buy that one again. Um, and then the other one, very similar to that, Boondockers would be Welcome. Boondockers Welcome, mm -hmm. which is really neat. Um, I really like this. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for a year. Um, I really liked it. It was it was cool. We only used it once mm -hmm. for um, a two night stay though yeah which basically so that probably paid, it paid for, for itself, itself. Yeah. yeah basically what that is same sort of deal only you're actually staying in somebody's yard like it's somebody it's mm -hmm. somebody's house um the one that we stayed at was um and what's cool about it is the people that do it the way they get paid is by they get paid for um 
basically they don't get paid they don't i'm saying they get half off their membership so most people that are hosts right are campers also because they're getting half off their membership mm -hmm. so basically we were in oshkosh wisconsin we're like we needed a place to stay we didn't have a place to stay that night we put the thing in we like looked if there was one around the people were like yep we're gonna be home you literally pulled in their driveway. They had an extra driveway at a barn and we like parked in these people's yard. We didn't yeah. know them and they were super cool. Yeah. The dude was like a engineer that like made sure that your toilet paper didn't soak through too soon. Like he was yeah. a really neat guy. Um, and it was a really fun time and they were really cool. And we stayed there for a couple of days and did a bunch of exploring and stuff. Um, but again, same thing. We don't really travel like that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we're going to get that one again. Although of those two, that's the one I would get. Yes. And so the similarities are you need to be self-contained yes. because you are to assume. Both sites tell you to assume you have no kind of hookups or electricity available. Um, so we touched on this. So like Harvest Host is good at describing the business, telling you how to contact them, typically by phone number. And they do have some route planning. So you can say, like, I'm going from here to here. Tell me what's on the way, not more than however many miles off my route. Um, so it's really good for planning like hey, that if you are using Harvest Host. What I love about Boondockers Welcome, again, this is somebody's house. So I was like, this is weird, right? Like, they have to tell me where they live. And I... It, it just felt uncomfortable like who does this um, but what it is is you build this profile um, you have to build a profile of yourself they expect you to have pictures um, be really open about it's sort of like uber yeah and and so yeah and there's no monies exchange they tell you like you should leave a tip or something like something to tell them thank you um, but like he's saying so our people they were campers they had a farm and it was so cute because she was keeping like a log of all the people that had stayed there. So she was really excited to like have us there, um, told us about some travel nearby because she, they love to travel. So it was just a really cool opportunity, but I love that it was, it was a self-contained system. We could email them. It kept all the records of our conversations in there. We could upload pictures back to them. Like it was a whole ecosystem that yeah. I was really impressed with because Harvest Host didn't have any of that mm -hmm. stuff. And I really liked the security of knowing how I was going to reach these people, when to expect them to reply. Um, there's even like an online calendar. They can set when, what dates. Like, so if they were going on a trip, they could say like, these days aren't available. And it's not because somebody's staying there. It's because they're not home. So it was just a really good system yeah and then basically for the trust factor of it the person we can rate the people where we yep. stayed but they can also rate us so if we were not nice so she if, was also really kind to let us stay there because we yeah. just built our profile like on the way to their house yeah um yeah so you know if you if you were you know, if they were hospitable and, and you overstayed your welcome or if you were rude to mm -hmm. the host mm -hmm. or whatever, they could put that in there and like rate you bad. But if you, so you had to be a good guest, they could rate the guest, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. And, it, and it made the trust factor a, a lot higher. Uh, and I, I really, I really dug that. That was really cool. What you else? You make me want to do it again now. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that thing. Um, so then the other thing that we currently have that we did not purchase but we are currently We have another one that we of. purchased. What? FMCA. There is no camping discounts with that, so I did not include that. And there is a bunch of tire and equipment discounts that I didn't ever find use useful. Okay. I, don't I just thought we were talking about camping. So I don't necessarily know that we're going to get Family Motor Coach Association again okay. next year because I just don't feel like we use any Yeah, of so them. the advantage of that system is it is a larger network. They do have some, some pretty significant discounts for things Tires. like if you need. Um, so we already have like a roadside assistance plan. We already have... Whatever that has, I guess that's the same thing. Roadside assistance and like hazard and mm -hmm. we have all of that, but a lot of people don't. So FMCA mm -hmm. 
creates like, hey, I'm a member of this and now I'm eligible for this group discount package thing kind of. Um, so they have tires, they have um, those type of things mm -hmm. and various insurance things. Mm -hmm. um, but to my knowledge, we've used zero features. We've used them. zero yeah. features of it. I actually got it because I thought I was going to save a bunch of money when I bought tires because right. when we bought tires for this thing, it was $3,500. And um, I ended up finding a place that I ordered tires from with no discount that I felt that I got a really good deal. Mm -hmm. So we ended up not using it. And so I literally spent the 89 bucks f for that. And they have, so also some of these things have, um, associations and clubs and like they coordinate trips together. Um, I don't know that we are interested in that anyway and we sure weren't interested during oh, covid i totally would probably go to the big fmca rally meet thing, rally yeah. thing but you can't right now yeah. like none of it works but they're having it i don't know i i just don't feel mm -mm. yeah not right now like I, maybe you know a year ago we probably would have but i i don't yeah look at the forest river one since we have a forest river mm -hmm. product i'd love to go to that because You'd learn so much, but you just can't go to any of that stuff right now. Well, I'm not saying you can't, but we have chosen not to. Yes. Yes. Okay, next. I forgot about that. All right, so the the one I was alluding to, um, we are also have a current membership. We did not pay for. There's like a dealer package that gave us a, a, a scattering all over the country, really, kind of I think it was just kind of like to get a taste of what there was to offer of thousand trails um, I believe before we get back to our home base this trip we would have did we decide we would have stayed at a thousand trails five times mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. um, so it was for a year it was provided to us from the dealership we've had five stays so this is our fourth stay um, right mm-hmm and we are super curious and plan to talk to somebody about what it means to actually purchase the a way thousand trails works is you purchase a membership to thousand trails zone base yes so southeast uh northwest north uh southwest it's usually it's mostly on the coasts there's yep. not much in the middle Except Midwest, like uh, Kentucky Illinois, to Kentucky, Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you pay for a membership. And I honestly cannot tell you how much it costs because I do not know yet. I did find out. So they do have some prices on their website now. I feel okay. like that's very new um, for the most basic package. So it's $615 per zone. Okay. Um, you add zones for 65 a piece. That's for the 14 in, 7 out plan. Okay. And to Don't add, get into all those details. How much is it? To add the trails, the bigger package, yeah. is 315 So it's like $930. For a year? For a year. Okay. So in the way, not to get all into the weeds on this, but basically, if that's right, 1000 bucks, then basically we would have stayed for a total of five stays times two weeks we would have stayed 10 weeks we didn't stay two weeks at most places we stayed a week we until stayed a now. week okay so one two three four five six seven weeks for a thousand bucks yes that's actually not too bad um so because the way it works is you buy that membership whatever membership you buy and then you can stay in that park for free once you're there 133 a week the, oh, that's really good. Downsides. The network of parks that they use, one we're staying in now, is all muddy. They're not KOA. Some of them are amazing. The one we stayed in La Crosse, Wisconsin, over by McPherson Guitars that mm -hmm. I didn't get to go to, um, is amazing. We're going to go back there and stay there again. That place was beautiful. And some of them were beautiful, but a couple of them were kind of eh. Um... But we have heard from a very good source that 
the condition of the parks is going to continue to get better over the next few years because the owners are trying to make it mm-hmm. make it better. Um, and so I'm very curious about it. It just so happens that we are staying in a park and right over there somewhere is like the main sales guy for Thousand Trails. And uh, so kudos to him for coming over and yeah, he actually came himself. over he and was introduced just curious himself. About our Jeep, honestly, yeah, he, he said just, he wasn't being a salesman, but he just bought a new he Jeep. He happened to have the jacket on. <laughs> he bought a new Jeep, and his Jeep is gray like mine. And we yeah. were talking about it, and he has an English Mastiff, and I used to have an English Mastiff. And anyway, so we got talking, and I told him before I leave, I want you to give me the full skinny on this deal, and there will be an update to this whether we buy this membership again because if it's a thousand dollars a year that's a lot but if it ends up being what'd you say 133 dollars a week Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's for what we paid so i i figured it out if you paid for a zone and then the trails right Mm -hmm. um it's 930 dollars which comes to 77 dollars a month oh yeah so it's not it's not terrible it's not terrible no um but we know so they're not good. This was a surprise to me when I looked it up that there was even dollars on the website. So I feel like that is very new. They are very, I don't want to say they're secretive on purpose. They want to talk to you. Like I get it. It's a sales funnel. Um, but I know from knowing what other people have, seeing other people talk about it, that there are many, many different options to choose from. We don't know what those options are. We don't know how much they cost. We want to know what those options are and if it fits the way we travel. I'm hoping that when I talk to him, he is going to let me document fairly specifically the various programs and stuff so that I can do a really well-informed video on the Thousand Trails program because there it just doesn't and seem... And the decision to, that we make. Yes. Yeah. And let you know what we do because there just does not seem to be very good videos about it out there at all and he told me that they are revamping their program quite a bit so there's a bunch of new stuff so i'm hoping which is why we didn't talk about it when yeah. we had his attention yeah. he was like give me a few days let me figure there's out there's some what's new coming. stuff coming i yeah. can't tell you about it till after x day so we're honoring that and um hope to talk to him soon yeah um dennis says it seemed he says um He said, there seems to be so many registration programs out there. It's hard to sort through the good value ones, to me at least. Um, And Dave said, it almost seems like you have to try them to figure out if it's a good fit for you. And I guess that's kind of why we're telling you about them. Because um, if, if you travel a lot and you need a stay over place, those harvest host things are really cool. Um, the, but we just figured out that we don't travel that way anymore. Um, KOA, I think everybody should get KOA. That's that's awesome. But that would be the fallback to if you, and it's only what did we say? $33 a year. So that's a great, we're saying we don't have intentions of traveling like that. But if we have, if we find out, you know, things go back to normal and we have goals and places to be in a timely manner, we may need stopover. Like we're not opposed to it. Just if we have control over our travel, we're going to do it this certain way, but it's not always going to look like that either. Right. Yeah. Um, and good Sam, that's a, that's a given because that's a fuel discount. Mm -hmm. Fuel is the biggest expense. And Um, even for the cheap, like you can use it for the cheap. Yeah. I used it for the Jeep last night. Yeah. For sure. Um, And let's see. Dennis says there needs to be a lot of value for that cost. So just to put a... Oh, we didn't say what it actually does. Just to put a point on that. um, If she figured out what we used it for this year and figured out that it ended up costing $133 a week that we stayed somewhere. Correct. That's a fantastic value. Um... If you stay in a KOA, KOAs are about 40 bucks a night. 40 to 50. Yeah. Dollars a night. And and up. Okay. So that's $350 a week. So um we try to make it a goal to book places 
225 and under a week would be nice if you could swing it. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to spend $150 if we can. Right. Um, 150 a week to 175 a week. So if it's 133 a week stayed, I'm and, happy with and that. And that 133 is coming from we only will have used it seven weeks. We could have used it more. We did not, you know, looking back, I, I wish we would have used it more because then we would have a much better picture going in of mm -hmm. what's available and what's out there. Um, we we did not pay for this membership. It was given to us and we kind of took it for granted. And, and then right. you're in it and you realize, oh gosh, like full-timers depend on this. So Wait, the, what? that cost is fixed. So let's, so if it's a thousand bucks, that cost yeah. is fixed. But the amount of times that you stay in the year is not fixed. So the way it works is you can stay up to two weeks, mm -hmm. then you have to leave for a week, and then you could come back and stay for another two weeks. So theoretically, you could literally stay for like two thirds of the year. Correct. In a thousand trails park for a thousand bucks. Yes. Now that's a wicked good value. Yeah. So where the value comes from is how much you actually yeah. use it. If you use it more, it's a great value. Now I'm like, holy crap, we just need to like mm -hmm. chain these, the chain this junk together yeah. and like, which is what we've done on this run actually. Yes, for example. Um, and so we'll, yeah. we'll be here for two weeks. We're here for two weeks. Then we go. We're staying at a KOA um, for a week, and then we're staying at another Thousand Trails for two weeks. So we'll have four. Four weeks out of five out of five for free that we don't have to pay yeah. for. So if you could do four weeks out of five all the way through the whole year for a thousand bucks, now it's a massive yeah. value. Massive value. And for instance, there's also um as we're talking about, there's different park values. Like parks cost something different everywhere. The one we stayed at, at in La Crosse was really expensive um yeah it was 75 or 100 a night I yeah think. and there was no like weekly discounts like it would have been a lot of money to stay there so even if you um maybe we'll zoom out um and i'll put it in the comments of this video i'll actually calculate how much it would have cost us to stay at all these, these seven weeks at these specific places um and we'll look at the value like that yeah no, I think it's good. And we'll drill into this a little bit more over the next week or so. Um, yeah, we'll we'll drill into this this over the next couple of weeks and I will make another video. We will make another video about it. Uh, actually, whether we do it or not, so that you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that wraps up what we were members of this year. Um, so then some other things that are available that people can consider um we can talk about maybe why we didn't do it i don't know um so passport america is another really common one mm -hmm. they have a huge network of parks um when a salesperson catches you and talks to you about passport america all you hear is it's only 44 dollars and it's 50 percent off camping and you're like that's amazing mm -hmm. well it's 50% off camping for like one or two nights. It's not like for your entire stay. It's limited available. There's blackout dates. That is way too complicated for me yeah. to even care to deal with. Yeah, it was literally like, okay, it's 50% off camping there, but it's only two nights. And then it goes back to regular price. Oh, and it's only for like three weeks in yes. September. Like literally, yeah, it, it was, was weird. Crazy. And I do not have time to, I mean, I like to plan. I don't like to plan that much. No, no. Yeah, and we don't wanted. don't like for you to tell me no. We <laughs> wanted more freedom than that to be just like, because we don't know where we're going. You know, yeah. we have, we have a plan for the next couple months because we have some things on the agenda that need to be done and mm -hmm. family business and sort of things like that. But 90% of the time, it's literally just figuring out, um, you know, I'm very interested in that kind of a deal when we hit the road after retirement. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, these things also depend on your usage. Mm -hmm. 
Are you a recreational RVer who goes out three to four times a year or two, three times a year or, you know, every long weekend? So how many long weekends in, a, you know, like how many holidays are there? Like, uh, like seven or something or eight or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, eight, three or four day weekends throughout the year. Is that what you're doing? Is that how much you're RVing? Then maybe a thousand trails doesn't make so much sense. But maybe a KOA membership makes sense in that case because you want to stay someplace nice and you want to not have any headaches and you want the ease of just pull in and everything is there mm -hmm. um, for those few precious holiday weekends that you get that year. You want everything to be right. It makes sense. If you um, live, uh, let's say you live in, for example, in Augusta, Georgia, where we are, are based out of, and you every year you go to i don't know maybe maybe you go to florida for a couple of weeks well you can't really make south florida in one shot maybe you're going to stay down in fort lauderdale or something maybe you can't make that in one shot and so you're going to have to stay over one place in them then it makes sense i go to i go to florida three or four times a year and i need to have harvest mm -hmm. host because i need that stop over because i can't make that whole trip in one shot so i need that saturday night for free um then that makes sense you see what i'm saying the use case for each yeah. person and is the a little passport different. america will give you that too so you have yeah. to weigh all of these are different networks of campgrounds so like passport america is cheaper than harvest host but how much is available on the route like you really have to look at um, it is very specific. Like we can't advise you on what to do because right. everybody travels different and their needs are different. What they expect is different. Um, for instance, we're not retired. We're working. Internet becomes our priority when yeah. we go somewhere. Um, so even like say when we went to South Dakota, not related to what we're talking about here, but when we went to South Dakota, there were some really nice places to stay, but I wanted to be closer to the city because we needed to work while we were mm -hmm. there. Um, so we have to weigh those options that are better for us too. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that intentionally want to get away from everything. Yeah. And they're going to, you know, some lake in the middle of nowhere um, location-wise. Yeah. We can't and do we that. we like those too. We, we do if, too, yeah. If the internet says it doesn't work, then we're like, eh, we can't go there. Mm -hmm. We'll do a video about all the various apps that we use. Um, I, we kind of did one, but I want to dive into some of those maybe. Okay. Um, we use an app called Open Signal that helps us to find how good the internet is mm -hmm. in, in various places, and it breaks it down to carrier. Um, like right now, we're streaming this live on YouTube, and we're using a Verizon hotspot, but we actually have an AT&T-based hotspot for work. So... Um, we use it depending on what's faster, when, where. And this know. is great spot. Like we're, we're not close to like a grocery store or anything. I mean, it feels very rural here, but we're actually really close to I ninety five. So the internet is really good. Yeah, yep, that that is true. If you stay close to a major interstate, your internet will be a lot better. And I know that most people don't. Yeah, most people they're, are looking to unplug. They're not quite power users like yeah. we are. Yeah, <laughs> they might want to. They might want to stream some Netflix or whatever on a month. Uh, you You'd know, be really impressed how good YouTube and Netflix works when nothing else works. Yeah, it's true. Isn't that weird? Like, yeah, you can't even work because the internet yeah. sucks, but YouTube will still work. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so another one that I found. Um, escapees. I am familiar with that name because I know they have like some mail services and, yep. and it, it's, it's another one of those things like we were talking about with FMCA. It's an association to be a part of mm -hmm. so that you can then get discounted insurance or a mailing service. They have all these different service based things. Um, but it's $50 a year and they have their own discount network of parks too. We don't know anything about this. We haven't used it. I didn't look up where the parks were, etc. But I just wanted to mention it um, since this is what we were talking about. Um, yep. Happy Camper is another one. Yep. And it's forty dollars a year, and their their big thing is half off. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd stay half off wherever. Um, again, in their network, 
blackout dates, specific days, like limited days some places. Um, so, again, you just kind of have to weigh what your options are there. Yeah, I feel like some of those programs like Happy Camper and Passport America are made for folks that are sh staying for shorter stays. Yeah. Because if, let's say, you are going to go for a four-day weekend, which is probably be a blackout date anyways. Right. But... Let's say you were going to go camping for four or five days and you could get two of the five days for free. That helps. For sure. So it would make sense. But when you're full time, uh, bouncing around to try to take advantage of all those things costs money at six miles to the yep. gallon. So that's the other thing for me is I want to stay as long as possible in a spot to get the best value that I can out of the thing without moving around too much because six miles to the gallon. So, because fuel becomes so expensive. So, um, it again, the recreational RVer is gonna use these services differently mm -hmm. than the full-timer, for sure. And then another one I was personally curious about because I've heard a lot about it. A lot of people talk about Coast to Coast, which is a membership. Um, but that caveat is you actually have to be like a member of one of their resorts and then they have uh, an expansion like if you travel so it sounds like it's for people who stay more permanently in some fancy resort mm -hmm. um, and then they have an add-on package if you travel gotcha. um, so I don't know that that's for us but it was interesting to there is one in Lake Oconee Oh, which is um, fairly close to our home yeah, base. That yeah. was the closest one. So there is a way you could like fill out an email and get like, it, it must be like when you go to a beach resort and you like, if you listen to our program, you can stay. Oh. Because it was like, yeah. you get three free nights of camping, you know, fill out this form. Next and thing I was you know, like, you're oh, like, I'm going to be in some terrible sales funnel. Yeah. Ooh, no, uh -uh, I'm not. Uh -uh. Yeah. No. Awesome. So anyway, this was kind of a selfish discussion. We needed to have this talk. Mm -hmm. We wanted to kind of lay it all out, outline what we've done, what we're thinking about. Um, and then if you have feedback as you're watching this, if you have been members of any of these things, know something we don't know, have ideas, I want to hear them. Yep. So I think for us, the only ones we are going to keep of all of these... Mm -hmm at the moment thousand trails notwithstanding because we're still want we need to learn about that mm -hmm. so we're going to learn more about thousand trails and we'll get back to you um we're going to keep good sam obviously we already paid for it oh yeah i just i just renewed it mm -hmm. yeah because every time you go to camping world it could be like i see you're gonna expire in four years would you like to re you know they're like the people that work in the store, they must get some kind of Amazon gift card for the person that gets the most memberships sure. or something. Sure. I'm sure it is because every time you go in there, I see you're going to, uh, your thing expires in six months. Do you want to re-up it right now? I'm like, uh, and no. It's, <laughs> it's just like, it, yeah, because then your toilet paper costs you how much money? Um, yeah. Anyway, it, it's a scalable, like one year is the, the minimum and they have like two year plan and three year plan and the three year plan you know, you get some kind of gift card and then they give you this. I mean, I don't even know who it's wants like this, this huge book. It's like the old Sears catalog. Am I dating myself? I mean, it's like this huge catalog um, of discounts. Well, I'm not a coupon cutter and I do not have time to deal with that. Like, you better We send it are to an not app or something. finding every discount available no. for every little piece of thing. What we're looking for for us is to get the best value out of longer term stays to make full-time living more affordable. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for 10% off of this, 5% off of that, nickel and dime, every yeah. little thing. And I bet we probably could, but we don't live like that. We don't want to live like that. We yeah. just want to get the best value out of the thing. And we have to thing. work, so I don't have time. Yeah. I mean, even in life, I don't have time to go to Walgreens and CVS and Walmart and Target and Kroger and Food Lion and, you know, do all those coupony things. Um, Gary Redburn has to get up in four hours to go to work. Oh, oh is he a FedEx guy yeah, or something? Oh, so. dude. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, Sam, uh, good, good Sam. Sam. We're going to keep. Um, 
we're going to keep... Uh, KOA. KOA. And that's it. Yeah. Basically all we, the other ones. If we decide we need a filler, we'll probably do Boondockers Welcome Again. Because Over we liked it. Over Harvest Host. Over Harvest Host. Um, yeah. And then we're going to learn about Thousand Trails. Yep. And we'll get back to you. Thanks for hanging out. This is fun. Fun, fun Instagram. Yep. Oh, look. And our iPad battery is about to die. Yes. Which is running this whole thing for us. Yeah. So this so is perfect we timing. we to wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, it's been like 50 minutes. minutes. That's yeah. pretty good. Thank you so much. Uh, I will try to put some more content out on this channel. Obviously, I just did the What's in My Bag. It's very similar to the one we did on uh, Dylan Talks Tone. Um, but I went a little bit more in depth into some of the microphones and cameras and stuff that we're using. Um, and we'll probably get into some of this stuff. If you have any questions, put it in the comments to the video after it's over. And we'll try to get to it. If you're watching it in replay and you want to know more about some of this stuff or you want us to dive specifically into one of these things and help uh, explain it a little bit more. If you're curious about, I don't even care if it's something we don't want. Um, you know, if you're really curious about Harvest Host and our specific, I have specific thoughts about Harvest Host um, that we did not talk about tonight. So if you want us to make a video about that, whatever, it doesn't matter. Put it in the comments and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, I love the old Sears catalog. Yeah. And I love that people can coupon Dennis. Like, I am a little bit jealous. I wish I, I knew more about it and could do it. I know it's smart. I know it's the mm -hmm. right thing to do. But at the end of the day, like, time is money. And mm -hmm. I got stuff to do. <laughs> yep. And, and obviously, and a lot of the couponing thing happens uh, to, you have to buy, like, five of them. 